Welcome to the final 100 days of Minecraft. This time the game has finally been released. We will be going from 1.0 all the way to 1.20, though it will be split into two parts. The first part, this one, will be from 1.0 to 1.10. The second part will be from 1.11 to 1.20. Each version will be composed of two parts, an informational slash overview part, and then the gameplay part. The world tour will be on a separate stream on Friday, August 18th. There will also be channel announcements on that stream as well. Thank you for all the success on the previous two parts. I really do appreciate it. And if you're new here, please do consider subscribing and maybe even checking out my other stuff. Without further ado, here we go. Minecraft 1.0 was released on November 18th, 2011. Apparently it was also called the Adventure Update Part 2, which I actually didn't know that. 1.0 was the first full release of the game and was released during Minecon 2011, where a notch flipped a huge lever down marking the release. The end dimension was the third dimension to be added. The main end island is made of endstone with huge obsidian towers circling it. There was a dragon and when the dragon is killed, it will spawn an ender dragon egg and an exit portal. Once the player enters it, it will play the credits and the poem after. The Ender Dragon is the first quote, boss mob and gives Minecraft an end, sort of. Strongholds now generate a portal room which requires Eyes of Ender to open the portal. Endermen can not only carry some blocks and actually have sounds and of zombie placeholders. Originally, the end was supposed to be the Sky Dimension, but it was later scrapped. There were many reasons to its change from Notch wanting to work on other parts in the game, and to its similarity to the Aether mod. But in a statement by Jeb, he said that, quote, It didn't work so well because of how light is calculated. The Sky Dimension originally had this top-down light that the Overworld has, so you get like shadows and caves and such. But performance-wise, it didn't work. It was extremely slow. End quote. Nether fortresses are huge structures with many rooms and quarters that spawn in the nether. It is composed of nether bricks, stairs, and fences. And in certain rooms, nether ward spawns. Blazes spawn from spawners and drop blaze rods when killed. Those blaze rods can be used to craft eyes of enders and to brew potions. Potions are brewed in brewing stands with bottles of water. Magma cubes spawn in the nether and are like slimes. Gas also now drop gas tears upon death. In the overworld, many new bombs are added, one of which, the Mushroom Islands, are rare biomes that generate with mycelium which are kind of like the nemesis of grass. Giant mushrooms naturally spawn and mushrooms, a cow variant, also spawn. When milked with a bowl, they give mushroom stew. Lily pads now spawn in swamps. Cauldrons were added and can be filled with water. Snow golems can be made with two blocks of snow placed on top of each other, pumpkin on top. When walking, they leave a snow path and throw snowballs at mobs. Villagers were added and spawned in villages. They had the same AI as pigs and couldn't be traded with. Nine new music discs were added. Eleven, blocks, chirp, far, maw, mellow high, stall, strad, and ward. Animals can now be bred with wheat and heart particles will come out when breeding. Tools and armor can now be enchanted with enchantments via the enchanting table, which gives special properties to the tools like mining faster or more durability. They can also be repaired in the crafting menu by combining two of the same item. In world creation, hardcore mode was also added. When in a hardcore world, the player only has one life, and when the player is killed, they are forced to delete the world. The health bar also looks a little bit different in hardcore. Many textures were changed. Beds no longer spawn mobs, instead the message, you may not rest now. Fences now connect to solid blocks, and the hitbox is no longer a full block like glass panes or iron bars. When a tool breaks, it plays a sound effect. Golden apple has an enchanted effect and milk resets all effects. The moon now has phases which change from night to night. The armor system has been improved and armor has more durability. Tooltips for rare items are also pink. On the screen, there is a rare chance for Minscraft to show. It's around a 1 in 10,000 chance. Minecraft 1.0 was originally supposed to be Beta 1.9, but after 6 pre-releases, it was changed to release 1.0 and pushed back to Minecon 2011. On day 1, I wanted to explore the new features of this update, specifically the nether. Well, since I didn't have a nether portal, I went to grab some water and then went down to my mine to get obsidian. I even checked if I had any spare left, I just went straight down. In the tunnel I mined through previously, I found some lava and tried to make a spot for me to get obsidian. I didn't know there was a cave above this. It took me a little, but I got the obsidian necessary and ran back up. A flint steel was needed, so I just got one for my chest. I made another portal and then went in. It was not good. As soon as I entered the nether, I was greeted by a gas. Good thing I stole my flint and steel in case this portal got blown up. I took out my bow and started to shoot the ghast. It not only successfully shot the fireball back, but also killed it. I made a quick box around the portal and marked my coordinates before I started to adventure in the dangerous environment of hell. It was not the most riveting adventure, but I did make towers to try and mark where I've been. I kept wandering with my dirt crumbs and broken clock until I saw another fortress in the middle of lava. I made the unwise decision to make a treacherous dirt bridge to the fortress. Then I realized that there was a safer exit, but I never used it. Some blazes spawned in the tunnel, and to be honest, the only real reason I was there was for blaze rods. But I did find some nether wart. Throughout the rest of day 1 and into a little bit of day 2, I continued to get blaze rods while also trying not to die from fire and explosions. I didn't die, but it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. While trying to get back, I ran as quick as I could through the bridge but when I got to the first part, a gas spawned at the other end. I hid and hoped that they would go away, but 
They didn't. And I also didn't neglect to mention that there wasn't only one. When I thought the one that was near the bridge was gone, I sprinted and before I made it, it was back. I proceeded to kill it, grabbed its tears, and ran as quick as humanly possible back home. Well, not really. I took a detour for some mushrooms, but I got home. But not safely though. After I got back home, my inventory was packed, so I cleaned it up. Since I got these new resources, I wanted to experience draw, uh, I mean potions for the first time. I made a brewing stand and a nether wart farm, but kept one to brew awkward potions. After I finished those, since I had so many blaze rods, I made blaze powder and added to the potions, which ended up being strength. You learn something new every day. Well, I have these potions, so let's make these better, by making them last longer. I actually never got to drink these potions in the end, foreshadowing. The sugar king farm was fully grown, so I harvested it and looked at my home that I haven't seen in months. It was sorta of good to be back. In the early hours of day 3, I left to explore and hope that there was something new. I made a boat and also got two achievements. Oh achievements. Too bad they're gone now. At least on Java. While on this trek, I made sure to go perpendicularly from my bridge so I don't load chunks in front of my bridge. Since boats are still stupid, I had to keep making new boats when I encountered water. Oh hey, the rain stopped. After I went through the taiga biome and killing some pigs in the process, I saw the trunk line and found new terrain. I traveled into the new terrain for a little bit and then followed the trunk line until I reached some new plains. I collected some seeds and past the plains there's a snowy tundra biome where I dug some snowballs for safekeeping. There are many animals in the snow, so with sword in hand, I went ham. No pun intended, it just sounded nice. There was also a ravine nearby, so I descended into it and mined some coal and iron, but during that I made a little hole to cook my game. After I finished mining, I returned back and refined my iron until day 4. But on day 4, I had enough of the snow, so I started my return journey. During that journey in the snow part, I wanted to keep food on stock, so yeah, yeah, just, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a and more. The tundra was big, but eventually I saw the plains and half retraced my steps through the chunk line and all terrain back to my castle. But by the time I made it back, the day was already over. So I did what every sensible person will do, clean up and cook. Not everyone does that, but the night was dangerous, so I also slept. Sweet dreams. What I neglected to mention was I also took bones out last night in the hopes that today, I will find myself a dog. I'd even make a boat this time, which in hindsight was probably a bad idea. I'm pretty sure I saw dogs before my trip, so I knew that dogs spawn pretty commonly in taigas, so I just went back to the taiga I found before. I found not one, not two, not three, but four dogs. And yes, I had to say all of that. My heart couldn't take leaving one of them alone, so I befriended all of them, and good thing I had enough bones. I made the harrowing journey back home, through land and water, thick and thin. When I got to the base of the castle mountain, I tested my dog's ability by punching a sheep. I kind of felt bad for the sheep. It looked scared. Ah, who am I lying? I don't care. All four of them came back with no serious injury. Not all. I brought them upstairs and made them some dyes, only to realize that dyeing colors wasn't a thing yet. No biggie, I just named them of science and assigned colors I wanted. Their names were Buddy, who would be blue, Ukulele, who would be orange, and that was about it. I didn't know what to name the rest, so I gave them random names and assigned colors based on their names. Oh, Buddy and Yuki will always be in my heart. Sunny? Lavender? Never heard of them, and that knocked out cold. On day 6, I went back to my old friend Nemesis. My friend Mrs. The bridge, or whatever you want to call it. I crafted some axes and went outside to scout a good location for my tree chopping. Going back home, I realized that there was a missing block on the tower, so I grabbed a stone brick and plugged the hole. After that, I went back to my old, regular tree chopping ways to keep expanding the bridge. But I did replant the trees. I'm not that evil. I did this for the rest of the day and into the nighttime, which was dangerous because of all the occasional mobs. I also tried to get an ender pearl, but the enderman would just not die. He was a pain and kept teleporting, and in the end, I even didn't get one. I sadly went back home and made more axes. For a little bit of day 7, I chopped even more, but I got sick of it and stopped. I realized at the end of the beta video, I never added a sign demarking the end of the bridge, so I made one. Right after the sign, I started to build more of the bridge, up until another body of water. And at this point, bridge plus water gave me trauma. So what I did, instead of going to that, I tried to build the pillars and hopefully not die from mobs, because at this point, it was night. I returned home and got some stone and smelted it. Still don't know why I try to continue the style of stone slabs, even with the knowledge that it makes everything way harder. But I did keep some cobblestone with me to build the pillars that extended underwater because that's just how I built them. But I pushed through and by day eight, got the rest of the wood I needed and finished the section of the bridge. Just the supports though. I looked longingly into the sea, trying to reduce my cortisol levels and then screw it, I just finished the path section. Well sort of, I had to get some more wood and then swam out like an idiot to finish it. Lighting is key kids, don't forget. I took out the stone out of my furnaces and made slabs, then got more cobble for the next day. When I woke up on day 9, I went down to the end of the bridge to face my enemy, the water. It was nothing special, in fact, extremely infuriating. Look, if people want me to upload the whole raw footage of this, what's wrong with you? The slabs took forever to place because there were half blocks and every time I went down to place the pillars, I would always run out of air because the water is so deep. I basically ran out of everything so I just watched stone smelt. 
It was a nice break from this back-breaking labor. By day 10, I built like there was no tomorrow because I wanted to explore the village ahead. I sped around the supports that took forever, the path which sucked the place, and the lighting that I surprisingly got used to placing. After that, I built a little staircase down and went down to explore the village. By exploring, I mean ransacking, and by ransacking, I mean civilly ransacking, by not just destroying everything. You could say I was helping. By the time I was finished, it was nighttime, so I went home and hit the hay. Minecraft 1.1 was released on January 12th, 2012. This version was relatively small and had no minor versions. Spawn eggs are creative items that can spawn a specific mob. These are the following mobs that have eggs. Fence gates now match collision boxes with regular fences and are openable with redstone. Oak leaves have a half a percent chance of dropping apples. Bows are now enchantable. All music discs, except disc 11, are dropped from creepers that are killed from skeletons. Magma cubes now drop magma cream. Sheep now eat grass to regrow their wool. Super flat is a world type that is completely flat and composed of grass, dirt, and bedrock with the occasional village if the option is on. Blacksmiths in the village now have chests that contain loot. On day 11, something I wanted to try to get were music discs. So I made some pistons and then went outside to set the trap and then test it. But there wasn't really a way of getting out without breaking. Then I broke it down completely because I want to set up when it was nighttime. So in the meantime, I gathered more wood. The bridge and its omnipresence demands more materials. I have to give it what it wants. By nighttime, the time was now. Wait, hold on, there's spiders. I quickly assembled the traps and lured a skeleton in. That was easy. Too easy. But creepers. Oh, creepers. Those are a lot harder. Especially when there was a skeleton following it. And then it was apparent that the skeleton was too far away from the creeper. So I built a little tunnel and lured it through it while not being exploited by the creeper behind me. It took some more patience and time, but soon enough, the skeleton was shooting the creeper. Not always though. And finally, after so much work, it died. I got a disc. It was Strad. One of my favorites, actually. I didn't care for another one, so I just wanted to play it, but the mods wouldn't lay off. I made a jukebox and then played with my dogs. It was great, but a new day was already here. I was still in the mood to get more discs, but I couldn't since it was day. But I have an excellent pastime, and no, it's not guns. Actually, it's really boring, chopping more trees. At last, night time. I cleaned up the previous trap, and learning from last night, I put the traps closer together, but I lost one piston because I didn't pick up the broken one. Unlike last time, this skeleton was way harder to trap. It kept walking around my pressure plates instead of going through. I couldn't take any more of it, so I made another piston and replaced the cobblestone with the piston. I caught a creeper, but that was a mistake. While trying to capture a skeleton, I walked between the traps, and the creeper blew up. Again, I was left with one less piston. But I didn't make another one this time. I eventually got the skeleton to be trapped, and with my luck, I looked at an enderman by accident. After one hit, it disappeared. Weird. I caught a creeper finally after so much luring. At least this night isn't a total waste. It died and I was trying to get the disc, but the skeleton wouldn't quit it. It was Maul. It was now day 13, but I saw an enderman and wanted its ball. I tried killing it, but again, I killed it so many times that I lost it. So I went back home and played Maul. I wanted to make an enchantment table, but didn't have the obsidian, so I took some from my nether portal on the nether side where it was dangerous. I tried making a book and didn't realize that paper had to be in a certain way and not just three pieces of paper. Finally, the enchantment table was made and I enchanted all my armor and tools. They were all sort of mediocre, but how much could you ask for when they were all low level enchantments? I made some torches and ran out to the end of the bridge to continue the bridge onto the village. It's the same old, same old, but I thought it was really cool that my bridge was going directly over a village. By the time I made it to the end, it was nighttime, so I placed torches while building supports. So it doesn't become a monster ridden bridge. But there were already mobs, and there were skeletons. One of the worst mobs to spawn on a one block bridge. I accidentally looked at an enderman and it teleported which made me fall all the way down. I didn't have my sword out which made it way worse so I ran to a big body of water and it killed it. No pro though. I finished the supports and then the path because I correctly assumed that the ground was too dangerous. But then I started on the pillars and broke the dirt staircase I made. I continued to build through day 14 until I ran out of wood. So I went to the local forest, which was a lot greener than the forest next to my castle. I gathered more wood, and by nighttime, I finished the path. After I finished, I still have time left, so sprinting down the path, caught a skeleton and three creepers. The first one dropped chirp, the second blocks, and the third, another strad. But actually, on day 15, there were still creepers, so I got more. I dropped another creeper, which dropped another blocks. What were these duplicates? The last I got dropped ward. I walked back home, put away the dupes, and played the new ones. I played through blocks and ward, but I liked chirp the most, and then I put the discs away. Since I still needed more wood, so I chopped until it was nighttime. Again. Before sleeping, I ordered my inventory and slept like a log. Minecraft 1.2 was released on March 1st, 2012. Jungles were added and are composed of very dense forests of jungle trees, which also means there's a new tree type, jungle, which also brought a new set of logs, leaves, saplings, and wood planks. Wooden planks for birch and spruce were also added. Ocelots spawn in jungles and can be tamed with fish to turn into cats. A spawn egg was added with it. Desert wells now spawn in deserts and are pretty useless. 
in villages, iron golems can spawn but can also be made with 4 iron blocks and a T formation and a pumpkin on top. They will attack any hostile mobs. Chisel stone bricks were added but were exclusive to creative. More sandstone variants were added with previously unused textures. Redstone lamps were introduced and are crafted with redstone and glowstone. Some textures were changed, vines can be climbed, and lava now makes a faint rumbling sound with occasional particles popping out of it. When shift clicking applicable items, they will go into the respective slot in the furnace. Bottle of enchanting were added and can be thrown to get experience over creative exclusive. Fire chargers can be used to set fire and can be fired out dispensers. The zombies can now break doors in the hard difficulty and has a rare chance of dropping tools, armor, if wearing, or an iron ingot. They will also chase villagers, sometimes even ignoring the player. Skeletons can drop their bow, and zombie pigmen can drop gold helmets, ingots, or swords. The world file format has been updated again from make region to the anvil file format. Height limits were increased from 128 blocks to 256 blocks. Worlds in the alpha level format will no longer show and the message must be converted pops up. On day 16, I left my castle and went to the end of the bridge. My main goal was to find a jungle because I love jungles and I wanted to make a treehouse. I ran through the desert and found a ravine and actually almost fell into it. After I made it out of the forest, I saw a jungle. I was ecstatic. As I went closer, I realized it wasn't as it seems. It was like a chunk era jungle and not a full jungle. I went further to no avail. It was the smallest jungle I've ever seen, but that doesn't matter. I still found a jungle. I picked a spot where I wanted to start my new trials and then walked in a straight line back to my bridge. As I continued back to my bridge, I realized how far it is and I realized how much of an investment it would be. When I got back up on the bridge, I marked a spot where I'll be making the offshoot from. I made some simple calculations and realized internally that this was expensive, really expensive. So I went to see if there was a closer jungle on the other side going past old chunks into a swamp and then continue into another plains biome. When I saw the coordinates, I realized that there is not a jungle here and we're already as far as we would be on the other side. Demoralized, I returned to my bridge as quick as possible with mobs following. I can't really tell what I'm doing here, but I was probably weighing my options with what material type I should build with. Stone. The obvious option was stone. It was the most plentiful and quickest to gather in large amounts because wood was a terrible idea. I returned home, placed some chests, and literally made a ton of pickaxes and torches. Throughout day 17 and 18, I gathered around a double chest of cobblestone, and since I didn't have stone, I had to smell it for smooth slabs. I still really don't know why I continued to build like that, but I guess I did. Maybe I wanted to keep the style. By day 19, I left to make the offshoots at the spot I marked and then make a bridge girder until the jungle. This was a horrible mistake, but I still did it. When I came back, I took some cobble and smooth stone with me to start fleshing out the bridge branch. I started with the pillars and by daytime since there was a skeleton following me from below, I had to kill it. And a creeper. Literally for the whole of day 20, I built all the pillars through the danger of mobs. They were so annoying. After finishing those pillars, I returned to my little outpost and waited for the night to end. Minecraft 1.3 was released on August 1st, 2012. In fact, the trailer made for this had cameos from now big YouTubers and also YouTubers that no longer exist. Trading has been introduced. To trade, the player will interact with villagers and exchange emeralds for different items, or vice versa. Emeralds can also be obtained by mining, though they are exclusive to mountain biomes only. They can also be made into blocks. Six side logs can be obtained but not in any normal way, such as creative or survival. Slabs and stairs for all of the different wood variations were added, along with the stairs for sandstone. Ender chests are chests that are linked to each other, meaning that they share the same inventory. When destroyed, the items are still safely stored, even if all existing ones were destroyed. They are crafted with 8 obsidian and 1 eye of ender, and can only be picked up with a silk touch pickaxe. If broken otherwise, it will drop 8 obsidian. Tripwire hooks can have string attached to it, and when a player trips it, it will send a redstone signal. Some textures are changed. Laws can be placed facing different directions like pistons. Slobs can be placed on different halves of a block. Dispensers will place minecarts and boats where applicable. Booking cools were added and allowed the players to read and write. When signing it and giving it a title, it will finalize the book making it a written book. And written books are not editable. Enchanted golden apples take the old golden apple effects and now there are two different kinds of golden apples. Books now require leather to craft and when tools break a block that are otherwise instantly broken with a hand, they will not lose their ability. Boats are not broken by lily pads anymore instead of running through them and breaking them. Both boats and minecarts when getting out of them, the player will be moved away from them. Desert villages are variants of the regular village that are in deserts. Desert pyramids are made of various sandstones and has an underground compartment that contains chests with loot in it. The underground part is also trapped with a pressure plate hooked up to TNT. Jungle temples are made of different types of cobblestone and spawn in jungles. They are also trapped with dispensers that shoot arrows when the player goes over the tripwire line. There is also a semi-hidden room behind these levers that has a chest that contains loot in it. During world creation, a bonus chest can be selected to spawn which contains some starter materials. Also, in world creation, you can choose different world types large biomes. Biomes in that world type are 16 times bigger. Big oak trees now have logs that go sideways. Single player commands have been baked into the game now. Adventure mode is a mode that is accessible through commands. It stops the players from building, breaking, igniting things, or using buckets. Though the player can interact with mobs and inventories. 
The creative menu is now organized and has a search tab. Items cannot be destroyed by shift clicking the items into the creative menu. A tab that goes into the survival menu was also added and has a slot to destroy items. When spawning in creative, the player now spawns with an empty inventory. Experience cannot be collected in more ways now. Some ores, taking smelted items, and breaking mob spawners will result in experience. The experience progression has been adjusted. The enchanted level limit in the enchantment tables have been locked to 30 with 15 bookshelves. Items on the ground that are the same will now group up. The demo world now lasts for 5 in-game days. 1.3 is the last version to have no official name or promotional images. On day 21, I traveled back to the village, and now since villagers can now trade, I wanted to trade. There was no way down, so I made a weird wooden staircase going down. Their trades were pretty bad. What is this? One emerald for seven melons? Not even a full block's worth. After I was thoroughly disappointed by their trades, I went over to the grassy area to kill some more cows. Sorry cows, blame the villagers. I got all my anger out on them, so back to the bridge. Well, first I need some more stone slabs. And here starts again draining my sanity with this dumb bridge. Throughout the night, I was really hoping I didn't fall because I didn't want to get caught with those mobs. I was almost finished, but yes so far, so I had to go back and get more. By the time I traveled back from the branch bridge, it was already sunshine. Day 22 wasn't much different, but instead of more slabs, it was more cobble because the supports were almost done and the path was just cobble. I finished up the remaining supports and started on the path. I saw some endermen and thought that would be a good idea to go on an enderman dispatching spree. Hey, it did work out. I got three pearls out of it. Well, after that adrenaline rush, I completed the path and now road to the jungle was clear. Then I went home and remembered that there was still a lot of ores in the place where I got all the stone coal. So I mined all of it and got a good amount. Coal was really what I was looking for because I needed a ton of torches for that bridge. After that, it was day 23 and I returned home to clean up and make torches. I used those torches on the new branch extension even though it was more than excessive. Now that the branch was completely finished, I went to explore what new terrain there was. Past the tiny jungle, there was a lot of mountains with too many lighting areas and a jungle that seemed fuller. But at this point, I didn't feel like building any more bridges. I wandered the jungle in the hopes of finding a temple to no avail. But hey, look at this chunk error. The day was closing, so I made a bed with the sheep I killed and slept. But I went straight to work next day, chopping the huge jungle trees. Since I wanted to make a treehouse, I also wanted to build it with the wood of the jungle. I chopped countless trees, or it was probably around 5, and then went back where my bridge was to start at the beginning of my house. The treehouse. There was not that much planning, but the planning was just basically to build an amalgamation of wooden platforms around the tree. Actually, around multiple trees. I made a nice little platform and some fences, but I wanted to expand again. What I tried to do is make a quasi-realistic bridge by making it droop. It wasn't that good looking, but I still liked it. I built more platform on the other side and on top of the tree branch and lay everything up. I finished the droopy bridge and made another one, but it goes up. Kind of more like of a staircase. I kept making more platforms and stairs until I reached the top of the tree. This is where the last one will be, and the biggest one. It spans over two trees and actually hangs over a little bit because I wanted to make it bigger. I went down and made more fences because I wanted to make some fences around my platforms. While building these fences, I saw a fire and knowing how this could go so wrong, I tried to put it out as quick as possible. Then I tried my best to fence the edges because it's not as easy, especially with the stairs. The platforms were easy though since they were flat. After finishing fencing up the place, I started to make my new base of operations. At this point, it has just been an empty house, but I still need to live in it. I made sure to place chests, and since I didn't have stone for furnaces, I actually just mined the smooth stone I had. Look, I was desperate. From now until the end of day 27, I ran back and forth from my castle to the treehouse to bring all the items I wanted. And I didn't bring everything because that would have taken longer. It's a couple hundred blocks one way and I think I probably made around 10 or so trips back and forth and then I started to organize him. But I did bring one of my dogs, Buddy. You will always be my buddy. Finally, moving is over. Sheesh, even in Minecraft is stressful. Well, with any life, it's back to work. Bring home the bacon and going to work, but it's unpaid. I chopped a lot of wood and I mean it. I spent around 15 minutes chopping the jungle trees and when I got home, it was the next day. The extreme hills wasn't the most forgiving place. On day 29, I went back to the hill to try and find a cave to explore and mine. It took a little bit, but eventually I found a cave that actually went somewhere. There was a lot of creepers, and I don't even know how there was this many creepers. The caves had some iron and coal, but not enough, so I just started mining in one direction and following mom sounds. This cave had some iron and coal, but that was basically it. So I continued in the search of more caves and eventually found one because I heard water. But this one was special. It had lava and diamonds. I made sure to mine the diamonds safely and got two diamonds. I followed the lava down and found a huge cave complex. Instead of procedurally mining, I explored through a good amount of the cave and then went back to mine. This time, however, instead of just coal iron, there was also gold, lapis, and redstone. 
There were surprisingly little mobs, few and far between, which is how I want to keep it. We were heading into day 30 now, still in the mines. I was really hoping I would get more diamonds, but I only got two. But luck has it, after I started strip mining for some reason, I ran straight into diamonds. It was an 8 vein. What a miracle! I continued to mine an assortment of ores and almost cutting my life for it, I found my last diamonds. I now have 15 diamonds in total and started to leave the cave. After coming up to the service, I marked where this was for future use, which I never came back. Killed some pigs and trekked back home through the stupid hills and idiotic trees. Since there was no way of actually getting back up, I just water bucketed my way up. Apparently Buddy teleported me which almost gave me a heart attack. I completely cleaned out my inventory and then went back to my castle because I forgot something. During the move, I only prioritized my items but neglected other things, like my brewing stand, jukebox, and enchanting table. I returned back to the treehouse and placed those blocks down. And since I forgot where my past spawn point was, I made a bed and decided not to sleep in it. Minecraft 1.4, aka the Pretty Scary Update, was released on October 25th, 2012. 1.4 added the wither, which is made like an iron golem, but with soul sand and instead of a pumpkin is three wither skeleton skulls. Wither skeleton skulls are dropped on occasion from wither skeletons, which spawn in nether fortresses. Wither skeletons use stone swords and also drop coal, bones, and their swords. After spawning a wither, the wither will glow blue as it gains health until full. Then, it will explode and start to attack mobs and players by shooting wither skulls at them. If hit, the player or mob will get the wither effect which damages the player every so often, but unlike poison, it can actually kill the player. After the wither is lowered at half health, it is immune to error. When killed, it drops a nether star which can be used to craft a beacon. Witchers are like villagers, but instead of trading or farming, they throw potions. They can also drink potions to give them a buff. When killed, they drop items and have a chance of dropping the potion it's holding. They spawn exclusively in witch huts. Beacons can be used to give the player certain effects. It needs a pyramid of either iron, gold, emerald, or diamonds and requires access to the sky to work. There are different levels of the pyramids unlocking different effects. To activate, an iron, gold, emerald, or diamond is required. Anvils are used to repair, combine enchantments on tools, and remaining any item slash block. Enchanted books start with one enchant and can be applied to items through the anvil. They can also be found in dungeons. To do any of those actions, it requires experience. Costs depend on the amount and rarities of the enchantment, and is limited to 39 experience levels. Any higher, it would just be too expensive. In creative mode, there is no limit though. Anvils are affected by gravity, and deal more damage the more blocks it falls. Cobblestone walls are like fences but a little bigger and different shape. Flower pots let the player plant in it, purely decorational though. Command blocks run commands when powered and obtained through commands. Mob pads have been added. Wooden buns are like stone buns, but they can be activated with an arrow. Nether brick slots are added and stairs now connect to form corners. Repeaters can be locked when another repeater is aimed at the side while powered. TNT can be activated from flame arrows. Doors, trapdoors, levers, and buns can no longer be activated with left mouse button. Potatoes and carrots were added and don't have any separate seeds. Potatoes can drop poisonous potatoes and potatoes can be baked. Carrots can be made into golden carrots and can be used with fishing rods to make carrots on sticks. A carrot on a stick controls the pig that the player is sitting on. The carrot on a stick loses durability and when it runs out, it becomes a regular fishing rod. Maps are not crafted as empty maps and need to be right clicked for the map to start drawing. Maps cannot be extended with crafting with more paper, and crafting with an empty map makes a copy. Item frames display blocks, items, and maps. The music disc Wait has been implemented. Originally added in beta 1.9 pre-release 2, it was named Where Are We Now but since the name has spaces, it couldn't be added. The wither painting was added. Fireworks are non-destructive explosives that shoot up in the air. Baby mobs can be spawned with right-clicking the same mob with the spawn egg. Whole stacks can be dropped with Control and Q. Pressing keys 1 to 9 will switch the item with the respective hotbar slot. In adventure mode, blocks can be mined with the proper tools. Chickens now use seed to breed and pigs now use carrots. Experience is given when breeding and fishing. F3B shows the hitboxes around entities. F3P's toggles pausing when the Minecraft window loses focus. And F3H will toggle a detailed item description. Super flat worlds are now customizable. Biomes can be changed and there are many different default presets. On day 31, I took out my iron ore and then split up to be smelted. For some reason, I split up based on ore per coal instead of just evenly. Also, I brought my gold but that reminded me of golden apples, specifically enchanted ones. Since I forgot whether it was ingots or blocks since recipes were different, as you can see how golden apples are made, I tested all levels of gold. Found out it was blocks and made one because that's all I had. And then I placed up on my tree to show off to myself because there's no one else in this world. Then I made the rest of my gold into regular golden apples. And they were cheap, only using gold nuggets. I finished up the rest of my iron smelting and then tested out how to make a book because I wanted to make a full enchanting table. I also made a sugar cane farm, just in case. Since this was a new version, I also wanted to test whether dog colors could be dyed. And they can! Buddy is now actually blue! So I ran back to my old castle to dye the colors of my dogs that I didn't bring. The only reason I didn't bring them is because I wouldn't be able to differentiate them before colored collars. Ukulele is now orange, lavender is now purple, and sunny is now yellow. Now I can actually tell which one they are. While running back, these dogs sometimes fell off the side of the bridge, which also almost gave me a heart attack because the bridge isn't that short. They could have died if they fell enough. 
So what I did was, at the branching path, I sat one of them down and then brought two of them so they wouldn't accidentally die. It was sort of because of how they teleported and how they pushed each other off the edge. I sat Sunny and Lavender down and then went back for ukulele. Now it's good to note that I wasn't really paying attention to where I left him. That scared me because I thought I missed him on the branch section. But I found him in the end, he was just further back on the main bridge. I brought him over and then updated the sign to have all their names. Now that it's 1.4, scary. Meaning, it's time for the nether again. I cleaned up my inventory, took out iron, put meat, and then take some stuff from me to the nether. Like dirt and golden apples. I didn't have a portal in the treehouse, so I proceeded back to my castle and used that portal. The gas pan was still a thing, so I tried my best not to die while going to the nether fortress. It was pretty difficult, and this was probably the worst moment for a gas fireball. When I got to the fortress, I was slaying mobs left, right, and center, and also lost half my health in the process. Now, the same person would wait, but I became too cocky and then died from wooded skeleton. I died many times in Minecraft before, but this is an especially horrible spot to die in because there was lava over the edge. And if you remember, I did not set my new spawn point, so I literally spent the next half of the day going back to the treehouse and then setting my new spawn point. Day 33 and I have nothing. So I grabbed the food that I was cooking, some armor, a pick, a sword, and some blocks to hopefully retrieve my lost stuff. Keep in mind, it was already dangerous enough to go into the nether, and now I have been reduced to leather armor. I went back to the nether fortress, and once I got up, I was immediately shot with fire. Running over to my stuff, I grabbed it, and danger was everywhere. I boxed myself in and recuperated it as I was on the brink of dying again. It was a heavy loss. I lost half of my diamond stuff, and this is kind of where everything starts to head downhill. After I situated myself, I still made the dumb decision to keep on killing more mobs. It was for the content I said. For the content! Well, that didn't last too long because I left because I didn't want to die again. When I returned to the overworld, I harvested all my farms outside the castle. Well, all but the cactus farm, because who cares about the cactus? While going back home, my tiny brain thought it'd be a good idea to kill some endermen. I reduced armor, having mobs aggroed on me the whole time. And I didn't get any pearls! I went back home and then cleaned up. That was a horrible idea. Since I wasn't going to use leather armor, I made some iron armor and enchanted my iron stuff. You could argue I'd make more diamond stuff, but I don't think it was worth it. On day 34, I thought about repairing my damaged diamond stuff, so I made an anvil and dropped all my iron while doing that. I never actually repaired anything because I realized how many diamonds I'd probably use. So I did the next best thing, was to make an enchanting station. I broke my enchanting table and placed it on the top floor for room. Then I got some wood, sugarcane, and leather, and made some bookshelves. There were some more steps where we can gloss over that. I finished up building the whole enchanting station in another spot since I thought it looked better that way. Well, it wasn't that useful because I died and lost most of my levels. So for the rest of the day, I killed anything I saw. Pigs, slimes, cows, chickens, mobs. Well, mobs actually gave me the most XP. I learned something new every day. Suffice to say, I didn't get enough levels, but I was close. And you know how I said this is where everything goes downhill? Oh, I had no idea what was about to come. On day 35, I made more swords to get more XP and also cook up my food that I got. In the meantime, I went up to play with my doggies and thought some music was needed, so I broke my jukebox. And that was when everything broke. My game crashed, and hoping nothing was wrong, I loaded the world back. The chunk where I loaded back was different. It had almost been like it was overwritten. But worst of all, this happened on the chunk where most of my chests were. I was in shock, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't access what was left on my chest. What did make it better was that my dogs did survive the chunk error because it was not in the same chunk. That would have made things way worse if they did not survive. I chopped the tree for some wood and then went back up to see the damage. The enchanting station survived and some chests survived. What survived was some miscellaneous blocks and my music discs. I was so lost for words that I actually thought about going back to a previous save, but I didn't. I thought to myself that life happens and sometimes you just have to live with it. So I brought my dogs and went to the bridge and said goodbye to the treehouse. It was actually super depressing to build this whole bridge and house to eventually have to abandon it not too long after. I could have stayed, but it wouldn't have felt the same. I didn't want to go back to the castle, so I tried to stop shopping in the village. Before I went down, I sent my dogs on the bridge. I couldn't sleep in the village because of the constant mobs, so I tried my best to hold off until day. We were more than a third into the 100 days, and we were basically starting back at square one, but with tools. Over the next five days, I rebuilt as much as I could. Through 36 and 37, I made a new house, a humble one. I gathered a bunch of wood and made it on the bridge. At this point, the bridge was all I had. I spent day in and day out trying to make a house that would just work for the time being. I tried making it look nice, four walls, some windows, and a roof. I also furnished my house with chests and other things, but it's not like I even need to use them. I lost all my items! Well, almost all my items. 
I brought my dogs in and then it was day 38. Throughout the next three days, I went on an insane modding spree to hopefully recuperate the losses. I stripped mine for probably hundreds of blocks, found ravines, mine shafts, and ores upon ores. Tons of iron, coal, redstone, gold, lapis, and some diamonds. I was getting back to where I was before, but it was difficult. While well, on these five days, I was actually really worried that I ruined this world. That this, basically a reset, reversed so much progress that I thought I wouldn't be able to do some of the things I wanted. But for your information, the video never got scrapped, so it wasn't ruined. Minecraft 1.5, aka the Redstone update, was released on March 13th, 2013. Redstone comparators take two inputs, and depending on the mode, outputs different signal strengths. If A is greater than B, then it'll output a signal of A. If A equals B, then it'll output A. If A is less than B, then it'll output nothing. When subtractor mode is turned on, it will output a signal of strength A minus B. If A minus B is less than zero, then no signal will be produced. They can get signals from inventories with items in them. Daylight sensors output a signal with strength depending on the time of day. Droppers can face six directions and drop items in front of it. If a chest is in front of it, it will input the items into the chest. A hopper can transport items. They can take items from the top and can transport it in five different directions. If a hopper is on top of another hopper or any inventory, it will take directly from it. A redstone signal can lock a hopper which stops items from moving out of it. Both droppers and hoppers can emit a redstone signal based on the number of items in the block via redstone comparator. Redstone blocks are just solid blocks of redstone made from 9 dust. Trap chests are chests that will emit a redstone signal when open. Signal strength depends on the amount of players opening it. Trap chests can be alternated with regular chests for compact chest placement. Weighted pressure plates have two variants. Active rail rails true a TNT in minecart. Minecarts with TNT actually blow up more violently the faster it goes and it does not destroy the rails or supporting blocks. Quartz spawn in the nether and drop experience. Currently, you can make blocks of quartz, slabs, stairs, chiseled, and pillar. Nether quartz ore is affected by fortune and silk touch. Snow stacking is now fully implemented. Layered snow can be crafted and placed on top of each other, eventually forming a block. Dispensers can now put armor onto players. Like TNT, use bone meal, lava moves faster in the nether. Nether brick was added to craft nether bricks, which were pluralized to reduce confusion. Double clicking items will fill up the stack as much as possible while dragging them across multiple slots will evenly split them. Pressing Q in the inventory will drop the item being hovered over. Minecraft Realms are currently in preview. Realms are a Minecraft subscription based vanilla server. It can't be modded and is a whitelist mandatory. On day 41, I was done on my mining expedition. While I was mining upwards, I heard a bunch of slimes and then I was piled with sand. Since I have a handy dandy bridge to help me get back home, I just walk in a straight line until the bridge. That's the perk of having a huge bridge is that you basically just have to remember the Z coordinate and the X coordinate, but we can skip over that. I got back home and then organized my ores and tried compacting the ones I could. I also needed to smelt the iron and gold ore I got so they can be used. Since I didn't have a flint and steel, I made one and then went to build the portal. When I went through the portal though, it spawned me at my previous portal. Now what I realized is that there will be ambiguous portals now because two overworld portals are now linked to the same portal in the nether. I traveled back through the portal and ended up being in my castle again. I was kind of curious why I left behind so I searched through the chest and found some redstone. After compacting all the redstone, I went back into the nether. This time, it wasn't for the nether fortress, but with my luck, I somehow found another fortress. What I was trying to find was the new ore, nether quartz, and I did. I tried to get closer, but as soon as I did, a gas started to shoot fireballs at me, and this is not a good spot for that. There was lava surrounding most of the portion I was standing on, and I completely failed at sending those fireballs back. I lost a bunch of health and tried to get more, but you know what? Screw the nether! You know what? Screw the nether! I did make it out of the nether and make sure to break the portal on the other end so I would not teleport there next time. It was day 42 and I was returning back to my home. I organized everything, sort of, and then took the smelted ores and blockified my other precious items. Even though I knew coal wouldn't have worked, I still tried it and was disappointed. After that, I went back to the old jungle house to retrieve the enchanting table and bookshelves. It was sad to see that place again. When I returned, I got some cobblestone and made a little platform for my enchanting station because I didn't have enough room for it. I also didn't have enough wood, so I had to go to the nearby forests to get some. I made the bookshelves and placed everything on that platform. The gold finished smelting, so I took it out. And while I was scripting, I kinda remembered. I also lost that enchanted golden apple in the trunk area. Man, that sucks. Anyway, I made a diamond pickaxe because I had 30 levels. I clicked it 3 times for luck, then got a fortuneless pickaxe. To be honest, it was still pretty good, but I didn't have fortune. I also made a diamond axe and sword and got knocked back on the sword for 7 freaking levels. Now that was outrageous. I never enchanted my axe though, it was probably because I wanted to save up levels. After that enchanting session, I prepared some materials to go mining since I had this new awesome fast pickaxe to use. I started to strip mine and it was quick. It was like cutting through butter. Well, not that smooth, but almost. There were other ores, but diamonds were what I was really looking for. And I did find them. Not too many at first, but this one had to be one of the most satisfying. I spent today and day 43 mining and got a grand total of 22 diamonds. And not that much iron, but still a good amount. 
After putting them in the furnace, I ran around like an idiot and killed some sheep. Sometimes seeing myself do these things, I really wonder what was going through my head. Since my mob murder spree probably failed, I just harvested three crops in the farm. I finished harvesting and took out all of the items in my furnace, giving me a grand total of 30 levels. Now I can enchant my axe and I got fortune three? Are you kidding me? At least there was efficiency, but that still sucks. I really wanted unbreaking, not fortune. I tried to make an anvil and combine them, but it was still too expensive. Well, I cleaned up a little bit and I made a bed because I didn't know what else to do. On day 45, I went to the direction of the old treehouse for wood. I continued until I passed the old house and mountains into the next jungle. Since jungles is the easiest type of wood to gather lots of, that's what I'm going to get. I chopped for the next half of the day and then returned home to get ready for the next day. On day 46, I started elongating the bridge. Wikihow, how to make a bridge. Step 1, build a bridge girder with logs demarking the pillar spots. Step 2, on the spots with pillar markings, expand it into supports for the path. Step 3, construct the pillars so your bridge doesn't fall over. Still could though. Step 4, add the path so the plebeians can walk and not fall over. I still fall over anyways. Well, I kind of ran out of wood so I'll get some more. Step 5, sprinkle on some light so the mobs will not spawn. Step 6, rinse and repeat until satisfied. I still wanted to expand the bridge but still need a ton of wood. It turned night so I stopped chopping more trees because I still needed to save up ender pearls. It was also worse because I lost my previous pearls in the chunk area, but I did get two. After that, I returned to my bridge to start on the next section of the bridge. At this point, I was doing bridge sections in around 6 segments per section, since that's the most I can get from a stack of wood planks. Throughout the rest of day 48 and into day 49, I continued to build that bridge section and gathered even more wood. Actually, chopping those trees served dual purpose. Not only did I get more wood out of it, but also cleared out more area for the bridge. When I got back home, I actually did some organization in my chest because they weren't too appealing. Then I went out to get some pearls and do some XP gathering. I got some experience and loot, but most importantly, I did get a pearl. pearl. On day 50, I did some inventory cleanup and took some food of me. I was at this point trying to get more Eyes of Ender and that's why I was trying to get those pearls. There was this trade for Eyes of Ender that was completely unaffordable and a wool trade that was completely unfair. I made some shears and got some leaves for decoration, but not wool for some reason. Probably because I didn't find any sheep. While I was doing that, I wanted to get the stuff from those chests in the jungle house, so I did. I grabbed the stuff from the disc chest and left for home. I put all the stuff into a chest and then decorated the outside of my house with some leaves. I thought the greenery would look good on my house. Then I hit the sack. Minecraft 1.6 aka the horse update was released on July 1st, 2013. Horses were inspired from the mod Mill Creatures by Dr. Zark. To tame a horse, the player would have to keep getting on the horse and getting thrown off until hearts appear. A saddle is required to control the horse and horse armor can be worn for protection. They can be healed with bread, sugar, hay bales, wheats, apples, golden apples, and golden carrots. Max health, jump height, and speed vary among horses. Horse armor is uncraftable and has three variants, iron, gold, and diamond. They can be found as loot in dungeons, nether fortresses, desert temples, and jungle temples. Donkeys are like horses but smaller and gray. They can carry a chest that holds 15 slots. Mules are breeded from horses and donkeys. They can wear a chest like a donkey but can't be bred. Skeleton and zombie horses were introduced using the normal horse code but couldn't be obtained. Hay bales are made of 9 wheat. Carpets are made of the two same colored wool. Hardened clay is made from smelting clay. And stained clay is made of 8 hardened clay and a dye. A block of coal can be crafted from 9 coals. It is actually more efficient than using 9 coals individually. Charcoal got retextured to differentiate from coal. Golden apples require ingots instead of nuggets and give regeneration 2 for 10 seconds. And both apples give absorption for 1 minute and 30 seconds. Health boost gives the player 4 extra base health and goes away after a while. Absorption gives the player 4 absorption hearts that cannot be regained or naturally regenerated. It goes away after the effect is gone. Saturation 1 replenishes 1 hunger per tick and after it's full, nothing happens. Leads are used to string mobs around and leash them onto a fence. Name tags can be found in dungeon chests and can be named as animals to be used on mobs. Mobs that are named Dinnerbone or Grum are upside down. Spiders have a chance to spawn with potion effects. Baby zombies and baby zombie pigment cannot spawn naturally. The original pigman texture has been removed, and player heads no longer turn on the minecart. Nether fortresses now have chests. When riding a mob, the health appears on the HUD taking up the hunger bar. Experience is no longer displayed in creative and breaking blocks with a sword is no longer possible. Resource packs replace texture packs. It contains textures, sound, fonts, language files, end credits, end poems, and splash text. A new launcher was added and improves performance and stability. On day 51, I wanted to get a horse, and I had a saddle, so perfect. For some reason, I got some wheat. Maybe it would have helped to woo the horses to me. I don't know. I traveled near the end of the bridge and then went left from it. There was a forest and I saw a mountain that looked pretty scenic. I passed the forest and mountain and just swam in the water instead of making boats. It was a short swim and I would have to make boats every time I got out, so it wasn't worth it. Why there's so many forests? After the forest, there was a desert and a chunk area which was cool. It was cool to see the different terrain between versions. 
I went through the swamp, next to the taiga, and made a boat to travel through the ocean. At this point, the day was soon closing and there was no horse in sight. This was outrageous! Where's my horsies? The ocean was pretty big, but at the end of it, there was a plains bound, but at that time, it was night. I found some sheep to make a bed so I could sleep and maybe some horses would spawn. I continued and continued into hopefully new terrain, hoping to find a horse, but it was looking bleak. I'm pretty sure horses spawn in plains, but the previous plains had no horses in it. Something that scared me was that there was a boat that I apparently left. I didn't realize it then, but that boat shows that I've been in those chunks before. I couldn't really tell if this was intentional because I quit searching for horses or if it was accidental because I ran back to the castle somehow. So either I circled back or I had enough. I cleaned up and remembered that coal could not be made into blocks, and then proceeded to blockify my coal. After that, I wanted to reach 30 levels to enchant so I chose to go to the nether for blazes. Not only did I want more blaze rods because I lost all of them, but XP at the same time. This time I went to the safer fortress and then spent the rest of day 52 and some of 53 killing blazes. It wasn't the most entertaining thing, especially the fire. When I returned to the overworld, the portal spawned me back at the castle, and that was not what I wanted. So I broke the entire portal, but it was more bearable because of my fast pickaxe. Then I ran back home and then put away all my nether loot and cooked my raw meat. I made another diamond pickaxe, and with three clicks of luck, I got the same enchants. Since I had two of the same pickaxes, I wanted to see if I can combine them, but it was too expensive. I was pretty sure I was trying to kill mobs for XP, but spent the majority of the time just running around. The next day, I returned home and then prepared to go strip mining again. It was only for around a day, but I got a good amount of ores. Look, I don't know what else to say in these times. It's literally just me mining away my life. Mine, 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 ooh, ores. After I finished mining, I went back up to put my things away and smelted my ores. While that was being smelted, I went around to kill more endermen. It was going well until I got cornered by a zombie, an enderman, and a cactus. And I do mean that. A cactus. And apparently my spawn was reset, so I spawned back at the original spawn point. Hunger was an issue because soon enough I was almost out of drumsticks. It took forever, but I got back to the second alpha house and was literally scrounging for food. I found one raw pork chop, but didn't eat it instead of making bread out of my tiny farm. The food surprisingly did last me through my journey back to the castle. I tried to find more food, but that failed. I tried to reset my spawn, but that failed even harder, so I had one chance to get my stuff back. I got all my stuff. Well, I probably forgot a few items, but I had to set my spawn because I did not want to spawn back there again. Running back home, I killed a skeleton and slammed into my bed at a million miles per hour. Now that my spawn was reset, it was all good now. So I saw an enderman, and without any second thoughts about death, I killed him. It didn't drop one. Now I'm sad now. Well, no time to be sad when you got wood to chop. Chop chop! Chop chop! It's night time now. I killed another enderman after another wild goose chase, but it still resulted in nothing. At this point, I still needed a lot of pearls, and I was nowhere near to the amount I wanted. When I got back home, I flushed out my inventory and prepared to go on another mining trip. This time was more cave oriented which led to the inevitable of more mobs. But I did find more diamonds. It was shorter than the previous one lasting within the same day so I got less ores and other stuff. But I did compact my items while mining for ease of transportation and that it would take up less space. I returned home and finished smelting. Before the night went away I ran around in my bridge in the hopes of fighting more endermen to kill. Day 59. I wanted to explore again this time going past the direction of the treehouse. I wasn't expecting much and basically just killed and sheared animals through my journey. But the more I traveled and killed throughout the plains, I saw another village. I went closer and harvested their crops, this time with less sympathy. And look what I found! A horse! I actually ignored it for some reason and then went back to it after. This was the first horse and I love him so I tried to befriend him and it worked. Sadly, I didn't have a saddle so I put him in a hole. I know. Great first impression. And went back to get a saddle. I made it back within the same night and got a saddle from my chest and some wheat. For some reason. I was so eager to ride my horse that I neglected to realize that there was a ravine here. The same ravine I almost fell into earlier. But I got out with little scarring by day 60 I made it back to the village. I was reunited with my horse and then saw another one. I was curious whether that horse was faster than my horse. So I befriended it and did a little experiment. I brought both horses and then set up a start and end to see if they were quicker. Now keep in mind, this is the loosest experiment and I couldn't do side by side testing. From what I could gather, I couldn't really tell a difference, so I just went with the first horse. I traded my wheat and beef to get emeralds, but it was not a good trade. After trading, I tried my best to bring my horse alive and unscathed through a tiger bomb, which was not the best bomb to ride a horse in. I got back home and saw an enderman and just had to kill it, and it dropped the pearl, so it was working. I pushed my horse up the stairs and onto a bridge and blocked up the stairs going up to it. When I entered my home, I found all my dogs unsat and at no health, which was kind of scary. I also couldn't sit them down, so I re-logged and then they were all fixed. Yay! I felt bad for my horse, so I made a little pen for him, which is arguably not that great, and I named him Spirit, my beloved steed. For the rest of the day, I cleaned up my house. I know, boring. 
Minecraft 1.7, aka the update that changed the world, was released on October 25th, 2013. A lot of new bombs were added, such as mesas, savannas, sunflower plains, roof forests, birch forests, flower forests, mega tigers, and deep oceans. M variant biomes are rare versions of the same biomes and sometimes a little bit different. Biomes are now categorized in snow covered, cold, medium, and dry slash warm. Temperature determines if they have snow, rain, or nothing. As elevation goes up, the temperature decreases, which would affect weather. The world boundary is now solid in directions with X or Z higher than 30 million. A new world type, Amplified, scales up all world generation rules and makes every biome more extreme. Huge mountains spawn and get to be very resource intensive on the device because of how worlds generate. Two new trees were added, Acacia and Dark Oak. Acacia trees are very tall and skinny trees with logs that are gray on the outside and orange on the inside. They spawn in savanna biomes. Dark Oak trees are big dark trees that require a 2x2 sapling formation to grow. The logs are dark inside and outside. Along with these logs and saplings, they come with planks, slabs, and stairs. Potso is a dirt variation that doesn't spread and spawns in mega taiga biomes. Red sand was added and it's just red sand, but it spawns in mesas. New flowers are added, red, orange, white, and pink tulips, blue orchids, alliums, azure bluets, oxide daisies, and poppies which replaces the old roses. Two block high flowers were also added and include the sunflower, peonies, rose bushes, and lilacs. They can get bone milled and drop a copy of itself. Unlike the single block flowers, they are made into two dyes. Stained glass and stained glass panes were added and have versions for each of the 16 dyes. Large ferns and double tall grass can be made from bone milling grass and ferns respectively. Packed ice doesn't break into water, doesn't melt, and is opaque. Cauldrons now put out mobs if they go in them while on fire. Doing that takes a level of water. The color of sugarcane is now dictated by the biome it is in. More fishes were added. When eating a puffer fish, it gives poison 4 for 1 minute, hunger 3 for 15 seconds, and nausea for 15 seconds. It can be brewed for water breathing and cannot be cooked. Water breathing stops the breath from going down while the effect is on. Salmon and clownfish can be eaten, but clownfish can't be cooked. Written books cannot be cloned with an unsigned book, and when maps are on item frames, they cover the whole block. Minecarts with command blocks were added and can be activated with activator rails. Chicken jockeys were added and consist of a chicken and a baby zombie, or sometimes a baby zombie villager or a zombie pigment. Achievements and statistics are now stored individually between worlds and servers. Fishing cannot get items other than fish that are categorized as fish, treasure, and junk. Nether portals cannot be made in any size but has to be 2x3 vertically. On the death screen, the player now has an option to go back to the title screen. Item ideas cannot be referred by their names instead of their numbers and commands. F3 plus B now show hitboxes with a thin outline instead of opaque boxes. In the creative menu, the decoration block tab is now a peony. The resource pack menu has been overhauled to have two columns, one for the packs that you have and one for the packs that you have on. Multiple resource packs can be turned on at once. The top one in the menu takes precedence on the application. Servers can offer default resource packs, which can be enabled or disabled or prompted. The settings menu has also been overhauled. There are more customizable binds. Music and sounds are now divided into different types of sound. Video settings has more render distance and FPS settings. Super secret settings go through different random shader options that change how the game look. The Mojang splash screen has been changed from orange to red and black. It's day 61 and now I have Optifine. Now I can finally run Minecraft more smoothly and zoom in. Now I can spawn on people, but it's only me though. And I can see more because more chunks. We're past two thirds of the video, but the bridge is still kind of wimpy. I haven't been building the bridge as much, so I wanted to continue it. This was the largest mistake I've ever made in this world. Bigger than ruining my treehouse with a jukebox. Like every section, I start to build a girder. But unlike most times when I end, I saw something blue and wet. I turned around and I saw an ocean the size of which I could never comprehend. And this was just the teaser for what's to come. So instead of confronting the water, I just wanted to finish the sections first. First? While I was building the supports, I was like, there's no way it could be that big. Maybe it was just a funny joke, a guffaw even. After the supports came the pillars. I tried to do it without dying and I didn't. At this point, I didn't even care about conformity of wood type and just used whatever wood there was. Good thing I brought ample coal because I was going to need it. Once the last of the torches were placed, I took another good look at the ocean. I even extended my running distance and my heart dropped. As the chunks kept loading, I saw in the watery expanse was more ocean. I was kind of curious and scared at the same time on how far this actually went, so I rode on a boat to see how far it goes. A squid broke my boat in a way, but I made another one. It went for almost a thousand blocks when I saw an island, a flower island. I thought it was safe, but it was not as this was only just an island. I kept going and saw a root forest, which was good because I wanted to see more of the new terrain. But that also means that this bridge had to be built this far. When I made my way up to the beach, I built my way up onto the canopy of the forest and saw how far we were. We were around 1500 blocks from the previous point of the bridge. It was very clear to me that this would be the biggest project I would ever do on the bridge. I did some extensive math to find a somewhat exact amount of materials I need with the estimated length. And a little extra in case something goes wrong. I had calculated for both wood and stone variants, but the obvious option, though it was still expensive, was stone. 
The number I got was around 150 stacks of stone in total. I kid you not, even with a good pickaxe, it took me from day 63 all the way to day 67 to gather all the cobble I needed and smelt all the stone. Having no soak touch definitely made it way worse. I grabbed my whole coal supply because of how costly this would be. It's not the most realistic thing, but let's just assume that they have infinite strength so those stone supports don't break. And here starts my one and a half day journey of not even getting all the way through. All that time was just placing the stone bricks to the flower island and not even to the roof forest. After the stone brick supports were done, I started on the thing that would hold the path itself, the horizontal beams. But again, I made things harder myself. Instead of making just solid blocks, I used stone walls to connect the bridge path. What made it even more sucky was that I had to count each 10 block section manually because I had no demarcations to where each section was. But building the actual beams wasn't as annoying because they were just, you know, build and forget. By day 70, I was starting on the path which was good, but even with 150 stacks of stone, I was still trying to be cheap. The path was actually reduced to half the cost by using stone slabs because I didn't want to spend more time mining. It was cheaper but it was still harder to build because slabs are harder to build with in general. Minecraft 1.8 aka the Bountiful update was released on September 2nd, 2014. There are new stone types, diorite, andesite, granite, and their polish types. Prismarine blocks can be crafted of prismarine crystals and shards and can be found in ocean monuments. Guardians are the protectors and mobs that spawn on the ocean monuments. They drop prismarine crystals, prismarine shards, and fish. They can attack the player either with a spikes or the beam that they can shoot out. On land, it doesn't die like other marine mobs. They for some reason have an unquenchable vendetta against squids. Elder Guardians also spawn in the monument, but only on generation. Only three spawn per monument, and when killed, they drop a wet sponge. They can be smelted to turn back into regular sponges to keep absorbing more water. Sea lanterns are blocks that emit light and can be also found in ocean temples. Slime blocks can make entities bounce, though items don't bounce on them when falling onto it. Slime blocks stick to most blocks, and when pulled with a piston, it pulls the block stuck onto it. Players can also bounce, and to stop, all you need to do is to crouch. Banners are like signs but have wool on them. Using different dyes, the players can make different patterns on the banner. Banners are two blocks tall but physically they're only one block. They can also be worn as helmets but only with commands. They can also be cloned with the corresponding base color of the original. Barrier blocks are creative command only blocks. They are unbreakable and are completely invisible. To see them, the player has to hold the block out. The barrier blocks will start popping up with a big red cross out symbol. Red sandstone is like regular sandstone but with red sand. Iron trap doors are like wooden ones but need redstone source to open. Coarse dirt replaces the grassless dirt in the mega taiga, mesa, and savannah. Can be crafted with dirt and gravel. Fences, fence gates, and doors now have variants for each wood type. Fences now require 4 wood planks and 2 sticks instead of 6 sticks. Doors now stack up to 64 and craft 3 instead of 1. Chisel stone bricks can be crafted with 2 stone brick slabs and cracked stone bricks can be smelted from stone bricks. Mossy cobblestone and mossy stone bricks can be made from the regular type and a vine. Cobblestone stairs have been renamed from stone stairs to avoid confusion. When furnaces run out of fuel, progress on smelting rolls back at 2 times the speed of smelting. Beacon beams can have more specific colors when there are multiple stained glass on top and can go through all blocks that don't block out all the light. Buttons cannot be placed on the ceiling and ground. Daylight sensors cannot be reversed by right clicking, so instead of a max at noon, it'll be max at midnight. Mob pets are not obtainable when a charge creeper kills the mob. Mob spawners can be changed with a spawn egg. When wearing a jack o' lantern, look at an enemy that's an aggravated. Sheep now drop a food source, mutton. Mutton can be cooked and restore 6 hunger. Rabbits were added and drop rabbit hide, raw rabbit, rabbit's foot, and can be cooked and restore 5 hunger. They are similar to horses and have different colors to color. Giving a rabbit the name Toast gives the rabbit a special skin as a memorial of XYZen TV's girlfriend's rabbit, Toast. Killer rabbits have a rare chance of spawning and are hostile to players. It is a reference to the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Rabbits can be bred with carrots, golden carrots, and dandelion. Potions of leaping can be brewed with rabbit's foot. Rim books now say whether it's an original or a copy. Ender mice sometimes spawn when a player uses an ender pearl and has the same size of a silverfish but cannot enter stone blocks. Armor stands can be placed and made to wear armor. They can also ride minecarts. To take back an item that you place on an armor stand, just right click it. The AI for giants and humans have been removed. Tamed wolves will attack skeletons without provocation. Pets will display a death message when killed if they're named. Enchanting has been overhauled. It requires lapis to enchant and corresponds to the tier of enchantment. Levels consumed also use the same system as lapis, though you do need the level displayed on the enchant to unlock. Enchants no longer change when switching in and out the same tool. Instead, only enchanting tool will change the enchants. Greeter players can now control middle click a block to get the block and all the MBT values of that block. Spectator mode is a new game mode that lets the player fly through blocks. Scrolling the mouse wheel will change the speed of the player. The player can also view from the eyes of a mob. Spectators can also be seen by other players in spectator but with a translucent head. There's also a teleporting tool with built into spectator mode. There are more F3 functions. F3D clears out the chat log, F3T or F3S reloads the block models. Difficulty can now be locked to prevent the temptation of switching in dangerous situations in Hungry Fills in Peaceful Mode. A new default skin has been added, Alex. The Alex skin is slower than the Steve skin by a couple pixels. By day 71, I was barely done with the path from the bridge to the Flower Island. 
So I started on the next part of the bridge. The mountain wasn't too high, so it wasn't too thick, and it was where another mistake came. I miscalculated and put the two support blocks one block too high, but I didn't realize it and started to build the supports. Yeah, sorry. Even when I got to the root forest part, I still didn't realize my mistake. After I finished the support beams, I wanted to see if there were any endermen. There was, and I did get one pearl, but I almost died while doing it. On the morning of day 72, I returned back to the bridge and started on the second bridge support. Once I got back to the flower island, I began to build the bridge beams but also recounting so many times I wanted to be exactly 10 blocks each section. I'm pretty sure there was at least one section not 10 blocks long in the entirety of the bridge, but still. I needed more walls so I dug for more stone. Continuing the beam construction, I finished it and then went over back to the beginning. I completely finished building the path and lighting for the first part. After half of day 74, I actually finally finished but then I realized about the stone support. Well, you know, what actually happened was I made a boat and then boated home because I wanted to see how the bridge looked like from the bottom. I ran back home to cook the meat I got from the many days of building and while that, looked for some endermen. Once the food was done being cooked, I returned back to the bridge to finish off the section of the part of the transoceanic bridge. I built one section and then realized I completely messed up but since I was already so far in it, there was no point of fixing it. Actually, this was way easier to build with because the path was lower and with the support beams. Before continuing the path, I made sure to light up because I probably wouldn't finish it before night. I still needed stone brick, so I ran back and then not paying attention went straight off. Look, it was infuriating for me to see myself do that. Like, why did I do that? While getting the stone bricks, I saw an enderman and then killed it. But no pro try. And then on day 76, I finished the transoceanic bridge. Finally! After so long, it's finally over. My life can probably go back to normal. The curse has been lifted. I traveled back to the house and got whatever valuable stuff I had and rode my horse to the new lands. I set up a little temporary platform to hold my stuff. Since it was still nighttime, I explored around the countryside to possibly find some more endermen. Never did, but I did bring more stuff over to the new base. And at this point, my armor was basically gone, so I made some more. I went back to the old home of white wool and got the white wool from my old chest to trade for some emeralds, which went to an eye vendor. I really needed these. And I did try to get more pearls throughout the night. On day 78, I harvested all the wheat and then went over to the village past the jungle house. I probably went there to get more emeralds, but there was no wheat trades. So I just went on the plains to get more ender pearls. And got two more actually. I stayed in the vicinity of the village during the day and actually found endermen. It was just walking peacefully in the cave and here I come barreling down on my horse and just absolutely slaughtered it. Once the sun went down, it started to rain. Which completely thwarted my plans of getting more ender pearls because they just kept teleporting away. Since my old home was in a desert, and thus no rain, Enderman just didn't teleport around every millisecond, so I got another pearl, but not two. Also, my dog's collars got glitched, and I didn't bring them over because I didn't know which one was the broken collar one. I don't know when I crafted my Ender Pearls into Eyes of Ender, but now they're a grand total of 15. I made sure just to have some extra, just in case some broke. Since the stone bridge is done, I wanted to change the temporary wooden platform that I built. I changed it back to the old bridge format and then put a sign signifying that it was probably going to be the end of the bridge for this part of the series. Since I haven't gotten any type of this wood, I got some. Or a, a couple stacks actually. I also made another enchanted golden apple to replace the last one that was destroyed. The night was almost over so I didn't get to clean the chest off the bridge but tomorrow will be a good day. I hope. Minecraft 1.9 aka the combat update was released on February 29th, 2016. 1.9 is one of the most controversial updates, probably second only to beta 1.8. The combat system before 1.9 was basically spam click and the player could block. Now, weapons have varying cooldowns after swing and blocking was removed. Shields can be held in the offhand which can hold anything by pressing F. It blocks attacks from weapons except axes which have a chance of disabling the shield. Arrows bounce over shields and protect from creeper explosions. This update split the community because of the PvP. This fundamentally changed the PvP styles and strategies and some people didn't like the new cooldowns. Spectral arrows are arrows that give the entity a glowing outline that is visible through blocks. Tipped arrows are arrows that are tipped with potion effects. Enchanted golden apples are no longer craftable. The end had a massive overhaul. Some end crystal towers have iron gates around them at the top. And the dragon does a dragon breath attack which shoots purple particles and do a lot of damage. But they can be collected in bottles resulting in an item called dragon's breath. They can be used to make lingering potions which when thrown the potions effect lingers on the ground for a while. The end dragon can also be respawned with end crystals. End crystals cannot be crafted and is exclusively placed on obsidian and bedrock. After the ender dragon is killed, an end gateway spawns and up to 20 of them can spawn on the main island. Entering it will teleport the player to the end islands which are thousands of blocks away from the main island. On these islands, huge plants called chorus spawn. When breaking the bottom of the plant, the whole thing breaks. Chorus flowers spawn on them and is required to grow more plants. 
To harvest it, you need a Soak Touch tool. Coarse fruits are dropped from these plants, and when eaten, it will teleport the player. There is a cooldown for using it, like Ender Pearls. Coarse fruit can be cooked to craft Pepper Blocks. End cities are a new structure that is randomly generated and have rooms with loot in it. They are composed of the new endstone brick blocks, purple blocks, and end rods that emit light. A new mob called the Shulker spawns and shoot white balls that give the player the levitation effect. When Shulkers are closed, they are immune to arrow and resistant to melee, but they can be killed while opened. Shulkers can also teleport, and Shulker is actually short for Shell Lurker. One substructure that can spawn in end cities are the end ships. They hold the ender dragon head and elytra which are wings and can let the player glide. Elytras are equipped in the chestplate slot and uses the player's cape texture if they have one. When flying to blocks, the player takes damage and it can be very lethal at high speeds. 128 strongholds spawn now, as opposed to the old 3 per world. They spawn from rings from the origin. Grass paths cannot be made by recklicking grass with a shovel and cannot be silk touched. Structure blocks have been added, but for now, they can't be used. Brewing stands now need a blaze powder to work. New command blocks have been added, repeat and chain. The old one is now called impulse. Repeat variants will run commands every tick that is powered, and chain command blocks run when another command block that is pointing at it runs. Conditionals has also been added and can be toggled. Conditional means that if the previous command block that is pointing at it runs successfully, then the conditional command block will work. Unconditional means that it doesn't have to run successfully for it to work. Dispensers can now put pumpkins on armor stands and players. Doors and fence gates have different sounds. Trap doors no longer need a support block. Boats for different wood types have been added and now they have paddles. They no longer break when crashing into a block, and the player can use items when the boat is in motion. Boats can now hold two entities, and they travel extremely quick on both ices. Falling onto hay bales caused 20% of the normal fall damage. Without armor, the player can survive 100 blocks. Beetroot has been added and can be used to make beetroot soup. This used to be a pocket edition exclusive. Chickens cannot be led and bred with any seed. Rabbits are now smaller, and color depends on the biome they spawn in. Igloos spawn in ice plains. They are made of snow and have some decoration in it, but in some of them, there is a basement. In the basement, there are two villagers, one zombified. It also contains a splash potion of weakness and golden apple that can be used to cure the zombie. Superflat has a new preset, the void. All there is is a stone platform, and that's all. Treasure enchants are a new type that can only be obtained from chest loot, fishing, or trading. Frostwalker and mending are the first two. Frostwalker is a boot enchant, and when the player walks near water, the water turns into ice. But the ice made from the enchant melts over time. And it's also different from actual ice. Different tiers make different sizes of ice. Mending is applicable to all tools and armor and repairs the armor when gaining experience. But the item with mending has to either be worn or held out. The player doesn't gain experience when the armor is being repaired. F3 plus N switches from creative and spectator mode. When killed in hardcore mode, the player now has an option to respawn in spectator mode instead of deleting the world. F3 plus Q shows all F3 combinations. F3 plus F now increases the render distance by 1, and F3 shift F decreases by 1. In the options menu, the player can choose which hand is their dominant hand. In the world selection menu, worlds made before 15w32a will display unknown version. A thumbnail for each version is generated and becomes the icon of the world. Older worlds will have just a grayscale version of the default texture pack icon. An error pasta when hovering over the world and clicking it will load the world. Super secret settings and Twitch integration has been removed. Today's the day, the day I've been hinting for months, is here. All I have is some diamond weapons and no bow. I didn't even bring a water bucket, but it's fine. And I didn't ride my horse to the portal because I didn't want to lose him if I couldn't find him. All these factors compounded into the most botched assassination ever. As I traveled through the different terrain of the Minecraft world, I lost many eyes of Ender on my way. It was pretty scary because I wanted to have enough and it would have been very embarrassing if I ran out while having extras. The journey continued on the water which landed me on this island. But the eye would keep pointing me in different directions which wasn't helpful. It would point in one direction, I would go there. And then when I threw another one, it would point in the complete opposite direction. This happened far into the night until one eye actually pointed downwards instead of in the air. I marked the spot and then made a shovel to dig. It took a little bit to mine down, but I couldn't find it so I just mined in the direction of the bat, and I found it. I mined directly into the portal room and broke the spawner. I explored a little bit outside the room, but that was not what I was there for. So I set my spawn in the stronghold. The stairs are dark so I lift them up so no mobs would spawn. These are the worst stairs to climb up and down. When I looked at the portal, I realized there was already one there, only needing 11. I had 11. Realizing this, I was relieved because that meant I didn't have to get any more eyes. I made a chest and stored some stuff in it. Since I didn't get a water bucket from my house, I made one and went up my stupid stairs to get some water. I was now ready and jumped in. Immediately, I realized it was totally out of my league. The giddy crystals to me were the hardest, so I tried to break those first. But oh, I was so wrong. The main problem was I kept getting hit off the towers. I didn't have a bow, which was my greatest shortcoming in this battle. I tried my best with the stuff I brought, but I died. Many, many, many times. This was the most botched ender dragon I've ever done because it took me around 40 whole minutes to kill it. There were many times I would get up the tower just to get knocked back down. But eventually, after so much hard work and stupidity, 
I got all the however many end crystals there were. I have to say, this wasn't my best moment, but I did it. Now all I had to do was kill the ender dragon, which took a little bit because I had a crappy sword. Finally, it was over. The dragon has been slain. Now, time to claim my egg. What the heck? Maybe it's at my spawn. Oh, where is it? Oh no, did I just lose my egg? I tried looking under the portal on both ends, testing with another item, but to no avail. I literally, I lost my ender egg? Are you kidding me? After all that fighting, just to lose my one and only egg? So, uh, <coughs> I just snuck one in. Don't say a word. Keep this little secret just between us, okay? All right? And I did make sure to take everything before I left. Now that everything's over, it's time to go home. If only I knew. While trying to avoid every mob possible, I ran straight into a ravine and died. Not only did I lost my totally legit egg, but all my levels I got from the dragon. Since I didn't want to run back from home, I broke my bed and then died. Only to realize that I was spawned all the way back in the Alpha Lands. I... I don't know anymore. And how was that creeper so fast at killing me? What the heck? Why does nothing go my way? Needless to say, the journey was nothing but boredom walking thousands and thousands of blocks. By the end of day 86, I got back to my temporary home at the end of the bridge. I slept and on day 87, I took some food and then rode my horse to find my lost stuff. Even on a horse was annoying to get there because of the mountains, but I did find the ravine. Because I wanted to get my stuff quickly, I became impatient and then fell in and died again. But this time, with water bucket in hand, I was determined. But I didn't have my horse anymore, so I had to run my way back. Suffice to say, I got my stuff back and found my horse. And by the end of day 87, I got back home. On day 88, I started to build my next home. My second to last home. I wanted this to be like a bowl, but elevated above my bridge. The circle turned more into an oval instead of a circle, but it was still good enough. I ran out of wood so I had to chop more to build the curves of the bowl. The curves were kind of hard to build because I had to use placeholder blocks for them. They turned out okay, and like every build, it looked different in my head. More like it looked better in my head, and in reality, it looks like a piece of crap. I placed torches around the bowl and added stairs on the curves of the bowl to make going up it easier. By day 89, I could start the moving process. I added some chests and then a spot for my ender egg. I had even less stuff now, so sorting through all the stuff didn't really take too long. On day 90, I went back home to retrieve my dogs. To find out which dog was which, I looked back at old footage to see who was who. I brought them over my perilous bridge and they all made it out with no deaths. Minecraft 1.10 aka the Frostburn update was released on June 8th, 2016. In the nether, magma blocks spawn in clusters on low Y levels. When standing on it, mobs and players will take damage. Only some mobs spawn like magma cubes, zombie pigment, and squids. While sneaking, wearing armor of Frostwalker, or having the fire resistant effect, the player will not take damage. Netherwar blocks can be crafted but can't be crafted back. With Netherwart, you can also now craft red nether bricks, a fusion between nether bricks and nether wart. Bone blocks are crafted of 9 bone meal and can be found in fossil structures underground. They resemble giant extinct creatures and generate in deserts and swamplands. Structure blocks has had their purpose revealed and it's basically a way to save and load different structures. There's a lot of technical mumbo jumbo that I don't understand so you can just look it up yourself. And I probably couldn't really explain it to you. Polar bears and strays spawn in snow biomes now. Polar bears drop fish when killed. Strays are a type of skeleton that when shooting the player gives the player the slowness effect. Husks spawn in the desert and do not burn in sunlight. Like a regular zombie but applies the hunger effect when damaging the player. Mine shafts that spawn in mesa are now different. The new variants use dark oak and gold ore spawns more frequently. Villagers in taiga biomes and savannas spawn with their respective wood type. When on grass, it will spawn path blocks and when it's on water or lava, it will be replaced with wood planks. Auto jump is an option that makes the player automatically jump a block without pressing the jump button. And F3G shows chunk borders. On day 91, I wanted to build my first permanent farm, an enderman farm for infinite amounts of experience. First, I had to make an easy way to get the end because I didn't want to sell the 7 seeds when trying to get experience. So, now there it is. I made a nether portal and then looked back in the footage to see where the end portal was. I also had to calculate the overworld coordinates to nether coordinates, so they would be correct. It wasn't the safest thing to build over a lava pit, but I got to the coordinates. And then on the return trip, I widened the path by one block, for safety. After the bridge was done, I went back to the old temporary home and got the enchanting station from there. While I was there, I also went down to my old mine and mined some obsidian for the destination portal. I got all the obsidian I needed, and also some of the stuff left over from the chests, and then rode back to the bowl. Once I returned back to the bowl, I put away all the garbage and then went through the portal to place the destination portal at the end of the path. When I built the portal and went through it, I was teleported into a spot that seemed familiar. I broke the portal and then went down the stairs I made previously to build a new portal. I lit the portal and then got teleported back to the same portal in the nether. At least finally one thing goes correctly for me. I began to gather resources from my enderman farm, so I got a bucket of water and mined a bunch of netherrack for some building blocks. When I got to the end, I made sure to stow away my important stuff in a chest so if I die while building the path, I would not be mad at myself. I probably still would have been mad at myself. 
My strategy was to build 128 blocks off the mainland so I can isolate the spawn area. But that was just the bridge. The construction of the farm hasn't even began. I made an anvil and then repaired my diamond pickaxe. I also made 4 shovels to dig sand for the falling portion of the farm. Glass is not strictly required, you can use any block, but I just want to see them fall. Once I finished digging, I ran back home and I didn't even have furnaces at this point. So I had to run back down, get some stone for the furnaces, and then smelt them. Now I needed blocks for the spawning area, so I decided to use stone slabs because they were the cheapest. Since slabs are cheap, I didn't have to mine for too long. I also needed to recraft the bookshelves because I didn't have so touch. At the end of the day and into day 94, I started to ride back through the bridge for some reason. But then I stopped and then started going back the other way. I have no idea what I was doing, but while riding my horse back, I fell and I swear that all these falls are accidental. I have no idea what my hand does to swing my camera off the edge this suddenly, but it happens. To be honest, I don't really pay attention when I'm riding on the bridge. So I just used a boat and learned that horses didn't go in boats, so I left. I'll bring you back, spirit. I promise. There are also these weird air pockets. Don't know what Minecraft is on to make these. I got back home and then took my glass and stone with me to go to the end. The construction of the shaft was first, but I realized pretty quickly that I did my math wrong. I accounted for a circumference of 6 blocks and not 8, so I was short. I had to return back to the overworld and get more sand. It was also nighttime, so it wasn't the best time. On day 95, I had this epiphany. How would I make the endermite not despawn? And apparently, boats didn't do it until 1.16, so I couldn't use boats. So my only other way of doing it was using a name tag. But I didn't have a name tag, so I had to scramble to find a way to get one. And then I remembered, I can just fish for name tags. So I did, for the entirety of day 95. But a miracle came. The first thing I got on day 96 was a name tag. And then I named it. Don't make fun of me. I named it. Ender, might I kill you? I know it's the world's best pun, guys. Right? I went to the end and then realized that I didn't bring the glass, so I had to go all the way back to get the glass. Finishing the shaft, I began to build the spawn platform in a triangular shape because that's just how I built it. Look, I know this works, so I'll stick with it. After completing the spawn platform, I made a luring platform where the endermite will be housed. To get endermite, I had to kill many endermen for their pearls. Throwing these pearls dealt a lot of damage which sucked because I had to wait to heal. And I didn't even get one. But instead of going back down, I used my farm to my advantage and got some more pearls at the farm. Eventually I got an endermite, named it, and then trapped it in a minecart. Then I tried to trap the minecart in one block so it stayed in one spot. The endermen couldn't see through slabs so I replaced it with trap doors. And it worked! They started to fall down really quickly and I got the first taste of the experience. This was better than drugs! Should I be saying that? And I also expanded the platform to house the enchanting station. I also realized that Enderman could pick up the netherrack, but just ignored it for the time being and hoped that I wouldn't fall. Well, spoilers, I didn't. I don't know if lighting actually does anything to the path, but I did it. Now that I have this great XP machine, I wanted to make some godly armor with the little material I had. I spent the rest of the day and day 99 for enchanting a bunch of stuff. What I did was make diamond tools, but for armor I just used iron. I had lots of iron to enchant, so it was the best idea, and tools were cheaper, which is why I used diamonds. And because iron tools suck. I also changed the floor to wood so the enemy wouldn't pick it up and make me fall. When I was done, I made some truly OP armor. It was amazing to be back up on the top. Almost. Day 100. The final day. Well, not really. I didn't really do much. It was just kind of a wrap up day to prepare for the next part. I killed plenty of mobs and cooked plenty of food. And now, it's over. For now at least.